having done this experiment in which we have an infinite sample and we have selected 30 cases, we're now going to explore the central limit theorem and the sampling distribution of the mean. Our infinite population was the number of patients who were admitted to the ICU. This is continually changing, so the sampling data that we get this week will be different than next week or a month from now. Our variable of interest was the length of stay in days. The population size is 4,194, and we were taking samples of size 30. Well, let's say that there are 30 students in the class, and everyone does this experiment. So we all use the same data set. You randomly sample 30 cases. You have a mean for your sample. You have a mean for your sample. You have a mean for your sample. Everybody has a mean for their sample, and none of those means are exactly the same. They are all point estimates of the population. But first, a joke. Where do you send somebody who was injured in a peekaboo accident? To the ICU. All 30 students in the class repeat this experiment. So we now have 30 random samples from our population, each with a sample size of 30 and each with a mean. But those means are all going to be different. Which of these values, which of these means should we use to infer the value of mu, the population mean? And the answer is, we're going to average all of them. And we're going to use that average to get a mean of all of the means. Here's our population with a sample size of 4,194, and we don't know what the sample, what the population mean is. We will pull, in our case, 30, but we could do 100 samples, all of the same sample size, and each having a different mean. What would happen if we listed all of those means in a frequency table? The most commonly occurring scores in the middle and the, the less frequently occurring scores out in the tails. What if we created a sampling distribution of all of these means. A distribution of sample means is all of the sample means for all of the possible random samples of a given size, in our case 30, that can be obtained from a population. And again, that's sampling with replacement. So we could choose a sample of 30. Your sample of 30 is going to be different from your sample of 30. Everyone gets a different set of elements in their sample, but they all give us a mean, and there is a, an absolute limit on the number of samples that could be drawn. It's just that that number is huge. So every time we take a sample, it's going to fall somewhere in that distribution of sample means. The reason why your mean might differ from your mean is because of sampling error. But as we increase our sample size from 30 to 50 to 100 to 1,000, the sampling error decreases. We get a better estimator of the mean from a larger sample than we do from a smaller sample. And our distribution of sample means becomes more normally distributed. Let's look at, at some histograms of these distributions. So here we have our population parameters. 4,194 cases, and I've drawn 30 samples of size 30, and there's my distribution. And you see it's not quite normally distributed, but it looks a whole lot closer to normal than we might expect. When we increase our sample size to 100, we see what looks like a much more normally distributed distribution. And if we increase the sample size to 1,000, we're pulling 1,000 cases at a time, now our sampling distribution of the mean really starts to look much more like a normal curve. We can see that the estimators with n of 30, the mean was 3.27, that's the mean of all of these samples, which is pretty close to the population mean of 3.366. Notice that when we jump up to 100 cases, we now have a mean of 3.36, which is spot on to our population parameter. 
With our sample size of 100, we're still really close. We're off by two one hundredths of a point. But with increasing sample sizes, we're getting much closer to the true population value. And this brings us to the central limit theorem. Now let's start with something that totally makes sense. If your original population is normally distributed and you draw a sample from that normally distributed population, you would expect that your sample would also be normally distributed. If the original distribution is normal, the distribution of sample means will be normal, even for small sample sizes. But what if your population distribution is not normal? What if it's skewed? What if it has a great deal of kurtosis? What if it's a uniform distribution where every case has the same probability of being selected? If the distribution is, let's say, highly skewed, you might expect that all of your samples are gonna be highly skewed and that the distribution of sample means, therefore, would be highly skewed. But what the central limit theorem shows us is that no matter the original distribution, the distribution of sample means will be normally distributed. And let's illustrate that with those three histograms that I just showed you. Uh, these look fairly normal, but what does the original distribution look like? Well, I've also created a histogram of the length of stay, and it looks like this. Do you see how skewed that distribution is? And yet, the mean of roughly 3.36 days, every time we draw a sample, the mean, is all, the mean of the sample is always pretty close to that 3.36. And when we create a distribution of those sample means, we get a normally distributed curve of sample means. Our distribution of sample means will be normally distributed even if our original population distribution is skewed. However, sample size will be important. If the population is normally distributed, then sample distributions will be normal even with small sample sizes. So if you're pulling from a normally distributed population using sample sizes of 15, you're still going to get a normal distribution of sample means. However, once that original distribution becomes more skewed, then we're going to need more cases in order to approach normality more quickly. So sample distributions will be normal with sizes of 30 or more. And this is one reason why you will see the sample size of 30 recommended so frequently. No matter the skewness or the distribution of your population, if you have sample sizes greater than 30, you have minimized sampling error to the degree that the sampling distribution of the means will be normally distributed. In the case that you have a highly skewed population, you're going to need larger sample sizes in order to approach normality with your sampling distribution of the mean. We might need sample sizes of 50 or 100. Therefore, it's important to know, as best you can tell, what is the distribution of your population. And if you know that it is skewed or has some other abnormality to it, you'll want to adjust your sample size accordingly. We have spent a lot of time talking about sample means. But there's also a standard deviation that we should discuss. Now, you remember the standard deviation in a sample measures the average amount of variability between any given raw score and that sample mean. The amount that's reasonable to expect simply by chance. And you may recall the formula that we used. We, we uh, subtracted the mean from each raw score, added it up, and divided by n minus 1. That gave us the variance. If we take the square root, we get the standard deviation. The standard error of the mean is like the standard deviation for the sampling distribution of the mean. The standard error of the mean measures the average amount of variability between a sample mean, your sample, and the mean of the population. That is reasonable to expect simply by chance. The formula for the standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n.
And this, of course, assumes that we know the standard deviation of the population. If we don't know the standard deviation of the population, we can also estimate that using the standard deviation of the sample. However, when we do so, there's a slight correction that we'll need to make based upon our sample size. And we're going to learn about that in our next set of lectures. Let's see what conclusions we can draw from what we've learned thus far. When it comes to sample size, bigger is better. An N of 30 for your sample is the recommended minimum. And we will use the standard error of the mean for a z-test. So thank you so much for learning about samples and populations. And I hope that this has been valuable. We're going to build upon this in our next lecture when we talk more about sampling distributions. We'll talk about the sampling distribution of the proportion. And then we'll put all of these pieces together as we move into hypothesis testing. So have a great weekend. I'll see you soon.